<laughs> Hello there, friend. What are we actually seeing? It starts to get complicated. It was easy. It will start to separate. They're definitely not behind that restricted access door. They're not. Forget about it. None of them will be able to be revived. Yeah. So please, be reasonable. Your age returning to the orientation room. Is the part of traditional. A stabby stabby, but I will think. And those rectangular outcroppings will. Here is my Catwoman glove. And uh, I should have a floating impossible anti gravity blah blah blah. That's true. Now, if we were to speak, take it, snapshot, eventually, how do you translate a discrete shell? Well, Ari, right, we've been tracking this thing for weeks and we still don't know what it is. The basilisk has its eyes on you. What are you going to do? And at some point, the acceleration is going to get so high that you're going to pass 9.8 meters. Look, I know that neither of those examples were fun. A strange fish on this side would never be fun. Leaving me weightless no matter where I am. <laughs> what the? <laughs> we generate our teeth endogenously or within our own bodies. I give killer high fives. Is it? Is it? This story is only one of a dozen. Okay, good. Get this rock here. Please. Where are you right now? Mm -hmm. Bam! The Fingerling! That Fingerling! Isn't that wild? Fingerling! What is the copy of Oh, I'm sorry. What were we talking about? No, I... Uh... Probably, if I had to use it for anything... Yep. Yep, exactly. Mm-hmm. Roller coaster at the top of the Burj Khalifa that comes all... Yep, totally read my mind. What? Oh, the fusion power is so... Uh, you can you can get it up there fast enough to... Um, launch all my enemies into space. <laughs> but don't tell them that. <laughs> What's that? Oh. I see what you mean. Love you, bye. Hello. I wasn't talk. I was just subscribing to some magazines. Hello, and welcome to Office Hours, a live component of the facility where good old Professor Kyle, as you can see, opens up his blast doors and allows all of you members of the general public, my beloved staff and security team, to stick with me for the next hour or so as we go through the nerdy sciencey topics of the day we'll be talking about of course if i can uh -oh. we'll be talking about nuclear fusion today and china's apparent breakthrough in nuclear fusion but of course during the entire time we'll also be going through all your comments and questions as they are piling up in the chat as you can see if you really 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 want me to see something of course you can try super chat i can't promise i'll get to all of them but I'll try my very best as uh, anything that I don't get to still goes towards the facility and our nerdy mission to bring you the very best educational and scientific content possible. Speaking of which, Sparky with the $500 donation. As usual, this guy is a real psycho maniac. He can generate his own power. Look, Sparky's not ashamed Sparky, Sparky shaves his head on purpose so that he can, uh, he goes out into the Nevada desert. He has this, the smoothest, most beautiful shaven head you can possibly imagine. He goes out into the desert by himself, stands at a correct angle in relation to the azimuth of the sun because he's brilliant and he generates his own solar power by reflecting off of his head down onto solar panels. He's a brilliant man and a huge supporter of the facility. Reese Donovan with an easy link $25. Hey Kyle, been a big fan of yours since the early Nerdist days. Always appreciate what you do. Just wanted to give you a small token of thanks. Says Reese, I appreciate it. Loki with a 10, second time catching the stream, first time with money. I appreciate it. Look, I know, I know a couple of you are new in here and you're like, what? Sparky's just throwing money. Well, first of all, Spikey's, Sparky's a psychomaniac. But second of all, it's not going towards the TV meta where I'm just going to stream, uh, illegally stream content on a large purple platform. We don't do that kind of thing here because we're not simpletons. 
This goes towards informing you. Yeah, shots fired. This goes towards informing you, and today we're going to inform you all up in it about nuclear fusion power. Um, Loki, glad there's a stream to keep me occupied while I have COVID. Loki, I, I came into that with a lot of energy, not knowing... Not reading the rest of your sentence. I hope you feel better. I hope you get better. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Seth with the five says, I love masters. Nerds. All hail Captain Hill, the nerdiest master of all. Indeed. A master of nerdery. Of course, if you want to continue on this conversation after we are live, we're about to get into Fusion Power right now. You can go to patreon.com slash Kyle Hill and join the facility today. Hey, you might see Mandatory Sin and Sparky running around psychomaniacs out of their mind. Mandatory with a $200 donation. Hey, Kyle, show the love. Ooh. I know you're into Magic the Gathering, but what about other nerdy stuff? Perhaps Yoldi Warhammer? I've never played Warhammer. I think I'd get obsessed, too obsessed with painting the little things. Uh, Jesse Wolf with the 10. Kyle with the 5. Why are you always on a phone call when the stream starts? That's so unprofessional. You know what? Fair enough. Well, this is the first time I've seen from this channel, says Above the Line. Above the Line, you are... I'd say a little bit over a year and a half late, but that's fine. The topic for today, let's let's pause the Super Chats for just a second. I don't want to miss anyone, and I want to uh, get to Fusion Power. Tier Zoo, one of the nerdiest and largest science channels on YouTube. Tier Zoo in the chat, so I hear you're into Magic the Gathering. We got a duel sometime. Tier, you are on, but I warn you, I have a reputation for being kind of a spicy boy. But Tier, happy to have you here in chat. Enjoy your videos, as do... I'm sure most of my audience watching right now, come on in, sit right down. Let's talk about fusion power. Now, this is China's East fusion reactor, which because I don't, uh, I know all this off the top of my head, the experimental advanced superconducting tokamak reactor. Now, around December, uh, early January, you may have seen this China's uh, this, this China tokamak, it's a lot of, a lot of complicated, uh, mouth movements. Um, you might've seen this Chinese tokamak in the news specifically because it just hit a record with regards to fusion energy technology. Ryan says, assuming it becomes viable, how long would you guess before full head transplants become feasible? Well, that just sounds like dying. Alex with the 20 says science comms is so important. Facts alone aren't enough. Didn't realize till Challenger. Good communication saves lives. Happy birthday to me. RIP my papa. He left me before my B-Day and always encouraged me to science. Alex, get in here, sit down. Let's learn together. Let's honor the memories that we have. Let's do this. Happy to have you in here sitting down. Now. I can't, I can't keep up with all of you. We got to talk about science. So. This superconducting tokamak has been in the news because it recently had a, indeed, breakthrough with regards to creating fusion power. But it's not a breakthrough like you might think. Even read uh, many of you at the facility sending me this story, many of you on Twitter sending me this news article, I was expecting something different than what it actually is. The headlines and stuff that you've seen, breathless and otherwise, <gasps> oh my gosh, give you a different impression than what actually happened inside of this thing. Well, it's complicated, like all good science. So first of all, what is fusion? Many of you watching are probably super nerds, so you know, but fusion is kind of like the opposite of fission. So instead of taking one large unstable nucleus, like a uranium or something like that, or plutonium, instead of splitting a large atom into smaller atoms and getting a release of energy, this is taking two smaller atoms, smashing them together with uh, temperature, pressure, heat, um, 
gravitational inertial confinement, that kind of thing. Smashing two atoms so close together, they overcome the nuclear forces that would uh, hold them apart, some of the strongest forces in the universe. And when you smash them together, a weird thing happens. You take two, let's say, uh, let's say two atoms, and each, let's give them a mass value of one. You smash them together, the new bigger atom doesn't have a mass value of two. The product weighs less than that. There's some missing mass there. It turns out, that that missing mass gets converted directly into energy according to Einstein's E equals mc squared. And as you know, I'm sure, c squared is a big old chonky number. It's uh, 186,000 miles per second. It's a big number, and you're squaring that number. 186,000 times 186,000. So even if you have a tiny 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 amount of mass you can get a lot of energy a lot of energy so in fusion reactors specifically what they're looking to do is take uh the smallest atoms possible in the universe in this case hydrogen they're taking hydrogen they're taking heavy hydrogen which you may have heard about peter in spider-man 2 deuterium and tritium now this is hydrogen just with an extra neutron tacked onto it and that's why they call it heavy like heavy if you've ever heard of heavy water it's because it has this extra neutron that weighs something so deuterium and tritium you smash that together and you get uh the next step up in the atomic chain in the periodic table and that's helium but it has some mass missing and that is converted directly into energy and it's a lot of energy now i want to show you uh, Ozzy says, how does energy convert to miles per second squared? I can't follow the units. Well, uh, I used the value of miles per second. Oh, well, it's, it's, um, well, first of all, Ozzy, you can convert, um, miles per second to meters per second. Um, but what you're not doing, it's not miles per second squared. It's miles squared, second squared when you do all the math out, right? So that's when you get, uh, you multiply that by mass. Um, anyway, anyway, anyway. We can, we can do that. We can do that after this, if you remind me. So now why is fusion power possibly such an amazing thing? Well, the amount of energy you get out of that little weird reaction with the missing mass is much more than the energy you could possibly get out from fission, splitting large atoms. And I will show you this with my large jug of semi-invisible water. Why is it doing that? Who knows? This is about a liter of water, a little over a liter of water. Inside, if this liter of water was seawater, if I went to the nearest coastline, I filled this up with seawater, inside, just naturally, on average, inside of this one liter of water would be enough deuterium and tritium to be used in a fusion reactor to equate to the same amount of energy as 300 gallons of gasoline. I could not hold 300 gallons of gasoline in my hand. It would fill up this void here. I would drown in gas. So, not this vault, like, not this volume of stuff, just the atoms in this stuff, some of the atoms would produce the same amount of energy as 300 gallons of gasoline. Now, if you do the math, basically, if we had fusion reactors everywhere, energy would be completely, it'd be more or less free. It'd be so bountiful that no matter the demand, the supply would be so large um, that energy would be more or less free. And then you'd have spaceships that do amazing things, like make it to the nearest star in a lifetime. So fusion energy holds a lot of promise. The only issue is that the only place that we see nuclear fusion happening is inside of stars like our sun. And uh, I, you don't need a PhD to know that the, uh, the sun is big and it's hot and it's heavy. Um, to make nuclear fusion happen in the natural 
natureness of the world. You need immense temperatures and pressures, tens of millions of degrees. And that's something that does not happen naturally here on Earth. So the solution is to create those conditions. Uh, Marvello Mavo says the first episode of Rick and Morty had a neutrino bomb. So if neutrons, uh, if neutrons are mostly ineffective and don't do much, how much explosive, how explosive would a neutrino bomb be? Marvello, the weird thing is, uh, with neutrinos is that unless you have a lot of them, um, it's not going to do anything. Like if the sun exploded, it would kill all of us with neutrinos. But, um, usually Neutrinos are, are so weakly interacting, the figure everyone uses is they could usually pass through a light year of lead without hitting anything. Uh, Matterbeam, the OG super nerd, says about 4% of the mass of deuterium and tritium becomes pure energy. So, thanks for being here, Master. So, you, you can see from Matterbeam in the, in the chat, just less than half a percent of an atom's mass can still get converted into an immense amount of energy. What was I talking about? Right. So to get this immense efficiency, aside from uh, colliding antimatter with matter, which would be the most efficient way you could get energy in the known universe, the second most efficient that we know of is fusion. Like becoming Gotenks. You geeks. So the solution is to create the conditions here on Earth, and that is what China's superconducting tokamak seeks to do. That's where they just hit a new record. Okay, so we know what fusion is. We know how much energy fusion could possibly give us relatively speaking. So what are we actually talking about? Well, inside of a tokamak um, looks like this. Okay, so... It's this big toroid. It's like a, um, it's like a torus shape. It's a donut. The inside, like if you filled this volume, it would make a donut, right? So it's like a donut shaped thing. Inside of this donut shaped thing is a lot of material like graphite, molybdenum, tungsten that is very heat resistant. Why? Because they're going to generate something crazy inside. What they're generating inside is they're using superconducting magnets. On the outside, going around in these weird circles, all this stuff. They're using a lot of superconducting magnets to create a magnetic field that goes around this donut in a specific way, such that that donut now contains plasma. Marvello with the 10 says, been in Africa and different countries since August till December, mostly teaching. Glad to be back on these videos. I now have to watch all your videos since August. Keep doing your thing. Marvello! Welcome back, buddy. All of this technology, all of these superconducting magnets, miles and miles of, of wire, all of this is going into corralling plasma. And this corral of plasma is very hard to accomplish. I've heard it put like um, trying to hold water in like a spaghetti sieve. It, it's very, uh, it's very leaky unless you do it exactly right. So a lot of science and engineering just goes into corralling this plasma in the right way. All a scenario with the Australian $50. Here's the 20 for the flashy purple light emitting thing that makes the room flash freeze. It broke all the windows and my ears are still ringing, but it solved our problem. Thanks. The rest is for some science simping. Keep it up. Thank you for paying for some facility uh, property that you destroyed. Now, it's, it's very hard to contain this plasma. But once you do, you start doing weird things to it. You throw um, atoms, other atoms, uh, like neutrons, into the pathway of this moving plasma to collide and heat it up. You hit it with high frequency waves, like uh, kind of like putting it in everything inside in like a super microwave, which heats everything up and heats up more and more and more and more and more. And then inside you will have something that starts to approximate the temperature conditions that you will find in something like a star. Now, once you have those conditions, then plasma, uh, uh, rather fusion, starts to become more feasible, doesn't it? 
Well, let me show you what I've worked out. <laughs> yes, indeed. As is canon, the facility is powered by superconducting tokamak. Now, yes, I know some of the some of the electromagnetic magnets are exposed. Don't worry about it. Now, once you have the inside of this tokamak primed, everything's contained. This plasma, as you can see on the screen now, is a totally accurate. This plasma is moving around and uh, it becomes electrically conductive. It can be corralled by these magnetic fields. Uh, Ronald with the 20 says, Hey, Cal, I'm on the way to your facility with three, uh, 30,000 pounds of enriched uranium. Uh, do you want me to drop it in the East or the West dock? Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> come on, you know where to put it. It's the West dock. Thomas with the 10 says, can we normalize calling tokamak reactors, nuclear donuts? Yes. Uh, spider Lord with the 10 for science. So inside of this nuclear donut, you have this moving plasma. And it, of course, as you can see, looks kind of sci-fi-y. And it can get to tens of millions of degrees. I'm talking about over 100 million degrees. I'm talking about hotter than the core of the sun. Okay. I have one of these, but don't worry about it. Now, once you're hotter than the core of the sun, this is... Act, this this is actually what it looks like. Look at that. Many millions of degrees plasma. It's an incredible thing to be able to do that. The power of the sun in the palm of your hand. But it's much bigger than your hand, so you can't. Now, what the breakthrough actually is here. Jeez. From the Chinese reactor is just recently they achieved well in the first half of 2021 the tokamak would it hurt if i touched it says uh kicker the amount of plasma inside of the tokamak is so small it has so little mass that i don't i wonder if you could actually just pass your hand through it real quick Depends on how quick, because you could like exist in the center of the sun for a nanosecond and be fine. The heat transfer is too, uh, doesn't go quick. We'd have to do the math. I don't know. Don't put your hand in there. You circus animals. Now, <laughs> I always love that line from, uh, Ocean's 11. Anyway. Um, so in the first half of 20, uh, 21, which I still can't believe it's not that year anymore. Um, this superconducting tokamak was able to achieve 120 million degrees celsius for 100 seconds that's a long time but just recently a couple weeks ago um they had 70 million degrees celsius still many times hotter than the core of the sun for minutes for a thousand seconds for a thousand seconds now, all of that is incredible. That is the breakthrough. Holding plasma like this that is hotter than the core of the sun inside of very crazily engineered magnetic fields for minutes. That's great. Oh, no, not this guy again with the 30. He says, just your friendly neighborhood storm chaser here coming through to Sim for Science. I know you said last time you don't know much about weather, but I will totally geek out with you if you ever do a meteorology video. Turkey lion with a VSM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so. This isn't, this is, this is, I, I, what I'm about to say does not diminish the achievements of these researchers at all. But we've spoken for 20 minutes now about what actually happens. Justin Moore says, how do you extinguish the heat? Exactly. Now, this is the point. Why is this not a nuclear reactor breakthrough yet? Why is this not really fusion power proven? 
as some of the headlines kind of make it seem. When everyone is talking about what happens... When everyone's talking about what happens to the heat exactly inside of this tokamak... Actually, let's go back. Inside of this tokamak is a vacuum. This, this plasma that you see orbiting around here, and this isn't an accurate representation, this is just the facility's own confidential technology, but there is just a few grams of plasma in there. Just a very, very little bit of actual stuff. It's very, very hot, but there's not a lot of actual stuff, and it's in a vacuum. Those two facts taken together means that there's only, the only way that heat can be transferred from this plasma is via IR radiation. Just, just radiation, like heat, feeling heat from a campfire. It can only transfer that way. It's not touching the outside walls. They want to preserve the, the, the walls here. They don't want them to melt. That's why they make them out of graphite and tungsten, molybdenum, and all these other high uh, temperature materials is because what they're actually doing is just proving that they can hold plasma that is hot. Plasma that could achieve and sustain fusion. That's it. Why? Why am I saying it like that? Well, because what an actual nuclear power reactor does, what a fission reactor does, is that it allows that stuff to heat up. You need that, that stuff to heat up so that you can boil water, turn that water into steam, that steam then presses against turbines, and you use that motion to generate electricity. Heat is the key thing. It, heat is the energy that you get out of a nuclear reactor. In this case, with this tokamak, with this breakthrough, they don't want this thing to get hot. They are just testing what the plasma can look like and what it can do. Um, more specifically, they wanted to specifically, specifically, they wanted to operate for over a thousand seconds, get a temperature over 150 million degrees Celsius, and have a plasma uh, with a one million ampere current. They've hit a lot of these, uh, they've hit a lot of these, but they haven't uh, done them all at the same time. Now, if this were truly a nuclear fission breakthrough, what this would be in probably some different orientation, but you would heat up the vessel or the walls or some material inside the vessel or around the vessel to heat up water, to generate steam, to generate electricity, bing, bang, boom, free energy. But they have not done that yet. What they are doing is step one. Step two is to apply this technology in what is called the ITER. And the ITER, or ITER, whatever, is the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor. This will be the largest test fusion reactor of this type, even bigger than the one in China. And it will use some of this proving that has happened in China and is happening in 35 other countries around the world to create a gigantic reactor that takes everything one step further. And yet this, this gigantic device will still not generate electricity like a typical nuclear power plant. We're not there yet. So everything I've said in the last 30 minutes is basically to get to this point. That despite the headlines that you're seeing, I think they're giving uh, the general public a wrong impression. We're, we are making very interesting and very uh, uh, fascinating strides towards fusion power, and, we, and it seems like it's happening faster and faster. But we are at the step where we're just trying to get, you know, the, the, the reaction chamber right. We haven't even come up with the design for the thing that uses the heat energy and generates electricity. This thing won't generate electricity. It might be able to get more energy, theoretically, out of it than you put in. That's another huge step. Nothing has done that so far. But still not generating electricity like a nuclear power plant, which means 
even though all these headlines are fun and exciting, nothing is replacing fission power anytime soon. Because in fission power, we put materials close together, the radioactivity makes them hot, it's in direct contact with like water, and that water boils and you boil that off for electricity. Okay? So, yeah, it is, it is interesting that at the end of the day, as Chad is saying, all of this crazy advanced technology is just to spin something with water. I know, right? Don't get me wrong. Holding 10, uh, 70 million degree plasma for minutes inside of a giant superconducting nuclear donut is very impressive. But nuclear power revolution, it is not. We are not quite there yet. That was 30 minutes on nuclear. Z, you are an animal, as you can see. One of our greatest supporters, one of our professor emeritus at the facility, Z, with the five hundo, who says it's 2022 and I'm still simping for science. You are. Theoretical question for you, since you have played Fallout. Because they followed a different path in technology by never going smaller like us, but developed other amazing things, how much do you believe would our technology advance if a pit boy with all the blueprints that exist in their universe were to appear in ours? Z, your legend grows daily. I forget which canon you are. Oh, wait, Z. Yes, you ride around on your custom uh, signed by Keanu Reeves motorcycle and throw money at, at passersby. I appreciate that. Thank you for always being a big supporter, along with everyone who is simping today. It's going towards me not walking into the ocean forever and, and instead trying to educate you as best as I can. Um, if we sudden, and this applies to kind of the nuclear thing, if we suddenly had Fallout technology, what is, what the big, in my opinion what what the real advancement in the fallout universe is is the miniaturization of nuclear power i don't they they have fusion cores and stuff right um in fallout and it doesn't really matter if it was fusion or fission but they're able to get that down to something that could fit in your car or your microwave or your whatever it is they have cores that are like you know the size of this thing and if you can miniaturize something that could provide you basically with free energy, think about how that would revolutionize society. Your car, just the uh, off the top of my head, um, you plug it into your car and you can basically drive for an unlimited number of miles for as long as you wanted to without stopping. That alone would change commerce completely. It would change everything. Planes don't have to refuel. Think about that. Think about how the world would change if planes didn't have to refuel. If nothing had to refuel. Almost never. It would change society, Z. Chris Rabb, hello from Wisconsin. Go Pack Go. Well, I mean, Aaron Rodgers has been kind of a dummy lately, but I still want that Super Bowl. Um... Hi from Wisconsin. What's your favorite dinosaur? I don't want to say raptor because that's that's um that's uh that's played out. Dilophosaurus was that the one? Um. Hmm. Uh, Silly Jonester says, uh, if fusion became a thing, how do you think major oil co corporations would react? Uh, they would try to make it seem uh, much more dangerous than it is, and then uh, over the course of many decades, plant uh, little seeds of doubt and mistruth among societies from grassroots on up, from information campaigns to lobbyists and local governments, all the way up to make it seem like it's something that we don't actually want to transition into. Oops, they're already doing that. So when's Kyle going to convert a classic car to electric? You know, you want to, Kyle says, 
Rye with the 10. Um, I do. I don't have an electric car yet because I've had the same car I've had uh, since I was in college and I don't I hardly drive at all. I have everything I need here in the facility. So um, I can use a new car. It's probably going to be electric. I don't know. A Beamer? A Tesla? Don't know. Ther I'd have to do some research. Uh, Teresa T with the five. Seeing you in here all day, Teresa. Thank you. Hey, Kyle, can you send a Kevin over with some top secret migraine medicine? I know the chemistry wing of the facility has something I can't buy at CVS. Yes, uh, we do have amazing migraine medicine here at the facility unfortunately uh our receipts are even longer than cvs's and there's a um tangle hazard do you think gravity waves are misnamed so it says tyrannosaur with a 10 i do they propagate through space time not through gravity it would be like calling water waves rock waves or whatever is thrown into the water waves do you think gravity waves are misnamed I mean, they're waves of gravitational force. Like, literally. They, they propagate... They propagate through space-time, not through gravity. But they are gravity. Which is to say... Which, which is weird. But, uh... Uh... Gravity moves at the speed of light. It's the fastest information can travel in the universe. And so gravity moves at the speed of light. And so, for example, if you were to suddenly remove the sun from the solar system, bye-bye, the planets would continue orbiting for eight minutes, or the Earth would continue orbiting for eight minutes, um, but everything would orbit as though nothing had changed for the exact amount of time it would take light from the sun to reach the planet. So in that moment, when you removed the sun from the solar system, eight minutes later on Earth, at the exact same moment, everything would go completely dark and we'd be on our way out of the solar system on a, on a tangent to a circle. Uh, on, a, on a line tangent to the orbit that we were on, flung out into the galaxy. Sounds kind of cool. To be honest. I want a nuclear-powered car, says Guitars Rock Forever. See, I mean, th that's one of those sci-fi, uh, little sci-fi things that I, that I, is a, is a cool world-building idea, right? Nuclear-powered car isn't the actual cool thing about the nuclear-powered car. It's, it's what it would allow you to do. If you didn't have to stop for gas, if nothing did, ever, how would that change society? And that's, that sounds like a cool world-building prompt to me. Ash Paul with the five says, Would love your thoughts on the moon over the horizon illusion. That one's actually contentious. I don't know off the top of my head what's the uh, what's the real answer to that. Uh, Otaku with the ten says, Would a plasma donut go good with dark matter coffee? Love, Kyle, show the... Um, plasma donuts, uh, they're not very, very filling, but they are hot and tasty. Um, Snow Wolf with the 10 says, you've talked about the precautions with clothes in your visit to Pripyat, but what about electronics like cameras and phones? Um, the main, so when you're walking around Pripyat or another area that's contaminated with radiation, which really there's only like two places, um, with high ambient levels of radiation, you activate something like this. Right now, my uh, eco-test Geiger counter right here says I am existing within 0.1 microsieverts per hour. I'm fine. When you're walking around a place like Pripyat, the outskirts of Chernobyl, power plant, the abandoned city, this doubles or so, unless you get something near something hot. Um, which is to say that the danger of a nuclear place... Um, a lot, uh, I want to make the, I'm going to make this video because I think most people have, uh, uh an incorrect intuition about what's, uh, what makes something radioactive. After a disaster like Chernobyl, what you're really worried about are the particles of that radioactive stuff. It becomes dust on the wind and it lands on everything. Now in, in Pripyat, it's not as bad anymore because it's been 35 years with nature and rain and all that stuff. Um, 
But what you're worried about is particles and getting those particles on your body or ingesting them. Deposit in your lungs or your uh, or your intestine where it where it wreak havoc on your tissues because it's so close to it. So when you're in an environment like Pripyat, like Chernobyl, what you're worried about is touching stuff that has some of that stuff on it and getting it on you. Why? Because radiation depends on the square of the distance. That is to say, it gets exponentially more damaging the closer it is to you. Conversely, it can get really safe really quickly. So if this thing was radioactive, holding it against my chest for a year might give me cancer. But if I went like this, I might be fine. Square of the distance matters quite a lot. So back to your original question, you're worried about stuff in a place like Pripyat in a contaminated area getting on you. If the area is radioactive enough, now what, what did I just say, right? If this was moderately radioactive, I might be fine here, right? Or, or here at arm's length and two meters, whatever it is. You walk away, it's fine. Now if, some, if a place is radioactive enough, that it might start messing around with my electronics at a distance, that's a place you can't even go inside. And uh, there's no place like that in Pripyat, which I will show you this month. Um, there's no place like that in Pripyat. The closest thing is under the dome, is next to the sarcophagus, which I will also show you next month we went under the dome through an airlock we went next to the failed reactor i saw it with my own eyes i was right next to it that had an ambient background rate a hundred times yeah a hundred times or 200 times higher than where i'm sitting now um so all that is to say in Pripyat, no, you're not worried about your electronics because if you are worried about your electronics, you're in a you're in a you're inside of a nuclear reactor or something like that, or really really close to fuel. Um, in Pripyat, you're worried about dust, and that's why you can't sit down, you can't touch anything, you can't take a drink of your water while you're outside. All of that stuff. Diligent waffle with the five. Love you and what you do. So these new reactors, everyone's trying. The first step for warp drive or convenient sp space travel? No. Um, but in my opinion, warp drive is far less likely than fusion reactors and fusion reactors will do the job that a warp drive is trying to do. Just not as well. Um, uh, fusion reactors could get you to Alpha Centauri within a lifetime based on the thrust it could give you with not a lot of fuel on board. Um, and you can do that math. So... Not the first step to warp drive, but the first step towards nuclear fusion rockets. Now we're talking. Mandatory with another 10. I remember hearing about the attempts to make a nuclear-powered plane in the 70s. Yes, it was a real thing. And it wasn't practical because of the weight and the react of the reactor and the shielding. And it was too spicy to be on. Exactly. Um, that That's why I said that the real genius of a Fallout world is the miniaturization. Right, right now... Even the best reactors are still very, very heavy. Like, you can haul the smallest ones around in, like, a big truck. But if you're flying, then you have to do the analysis of um, the economics of flying with a higher payload. Like, that reduces the pay payload that you can actually take aboard. And do you make enough money doing that? Or is it efficient? Blah, 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 blah. Also, in the, those were military planes, and you don't want, I'm, I'm going to guess, you don't want something shot down or uh, disabled or have a critical malfunction fall out of the sky into a friendly country. That's probably bad for international relations if you accidentally make a whole city have to evacuate or something. That alone could make it infeasible, yeah? Did you call Matterbeam Master? No. 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 
Thoughts on wireless electricity transfer? Says uh, Tripathi. Yeah, you can just um, you can just put your phone against one of them now. It's wireless. You're you're getting magnets to spin other magnets, which creates an electric field via a magnetic field. Um, it's it's not crazy. Um, sure. Um, Snow Wolf, and we're just chilling. We're chilling. Where are we chilling? Outside. Has everyone getting, been getting enough time outside? I don't know if I have. Uh, Snow Wolf with the five says, "I was actually worried about the dust on the electronics and taking out them out of the uh, taking that out of the safe zone. Can they be cleaned of said dust easily?" Oh, you're worried about their electronics we were using in Pripyat. Um, there's not enough ambient dangerous dust in the air that it would significantly affect um, getting. Uh, well, okay. So, if I'm in a field like I'm in now, what? And I will show you this also in another video. How do scientists go into Chernobyl and actually measure radiation? This will be a whole 45 minute video, but suffice it to say that the first step they do is establish a clean line. They say, if you walk past this line, you're in the contaminated zone. And before you exit the zone, you must be checked. And so one scientist will be on the clean side um, and whenever, when everyone's done taking their measurements, they exit the zone. But before they do, uh, you take a counter, you check their hands, you check uh, their hair, you, you check the soles of their shoes for contamination. And if there is contamination, you can clean it off um, with uh, mechanical pressure and water and, and that kind of thing. But it all stays on the dirty side. So um, we did... Uh, take steps to ensure that we weren't bringing contamination on the ground, uh, on uh, soil and concrete and, and accidentally brushing up against stuff. We checked all that to make sure it was good before going anywhere. Plus, there are, let me think, there are at least three radiation detector portals in the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. Um, one when you get off the train, one when you pass through the dirty side uh, of the uh, locker rooms, and another before you even go to lunch. And so there are, in addition to cleaning yourself, you go into, and again, I'll show you this, but you go into a, de a detector that you put your face, your hands, and your feet on, and it checks you. So there are multiple redundant systems of checking to make sure you don't have some hot particle on you and that is the real scary thing because as again i will show you gosh darn it just wait a give me a few months as i will show you what is really really scary and i wasn't afraid while i was there but if you are afraid of anything it's stuff like this we were able to find particles smaller than a grain of rice that uh, our detectors couldn't even measure how high the radiation was. It was off the scale. Something small enough to be blown on the wind or inhaled. Tiny, tiny. You, you, would, you wouldn't even notice it was a piece of metal. That's the scary stuff. And that's why you have to check your hands, your feet, everything, as you're going in and out of a contaminated zone. Did you use the bathroom while near the reactor? Um, no. Uh, the only bathrooms were inside, uh, near the cafeteria, after you go through a radiation detector. Um, yeah, so... To answer your original, original, original question, Snow Wolf, we do check and clean everything that we use. It's not like it's everywhere, it's not like it's flying around and it's super dangerous, but you do have to check because you can find dangerous particles. Uh, Christopher, with the 25, says, what was your favorite meal in Ukraine, scientifically speaking? I have been given, uh, I have I've eaten chicken Kiev, which is what they call it in Kiev, um, in Ukraine, it's not Kiev. I was always told it was Kiev, but the capital city is Kiev. And I've had chicken Kiev my entire life. Um, but when I went to a traditional Ukrainian restaurant and had chicken Kiev, oh, not even the same 
not even the same planet. It was absolutely fantastic. Thomas with the 20 says, the U.S. has had a hard enough time to make nuclear power... Wait. The U.S. has had a hard enough time, politically speaking, to have a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier base in Japan. Multiple aircraft would be nigh impossible. Good point. Yeah. Think of how much hullabaloo you've... People say hullabaloo. Think of how much hullabaloo you've heard about nuclear submarines or nuclear aircraft carriers. People don't want them anywhere near even their... Even the coastlines um, of their countries. So, yeah, imagine multiple nuclear-powered aircraft going around. Um, Kyle promises to show me a thing. Me still waiting on 3,000 neodymium magnets. Thomas, I don't... Yes, it's true. I still have 3,000 neodymium magnets kind of shuffled behind that big reactor uh, engine there. But I don't know what to do with it yet. What would a fusion reactor do to nuclear waste? Um, says Michael Skinner, zero waste, effectively zero waste. That's another of the big advantages. Wait, get closer to me. I want to show you how big it is. Wait, that came out wrong. Big, big advantage. See how much is, see how many amenities the facility has when you join the facility. You can explore all of this space. And you get your name on some of the spaces if you're a giant supporter like Z. Um, I forgot to say, longtime viewer, first time simping for science is Thomas. Thomas, I felt it. Hey, Kyle, nice shirt. Hey, good point. We just had our first merchandise drop at the facility as well. Our first uh, lifestyle merchandise drop. This one says dark energy on it. We also have dopamine deficient and losing to entropy shirts, mugs, hoodies. They're incredibly comfortable because my skin is incredibly sensitive. And I made a point of saying, if I, if it's not comfortable enough for me to wear, I'm not going to sell it to anyone. It's still available today at shop.kylehill.net. Um, are you going to stream Elden Ring when it comes out? I think so. Maybe. Speaking of which. Everyone who's still here and joining me after all this talk off there, after all this simping, all this fusion, all this nuclear stuff. Um, this week at the facility, um, last week we did not have a video and therefore we had no office hours. And that's because we were a little behind on one video, but I am pleased to say that this week on Thursday, Thursday morning probably, we'll be dropping our collaboration with the one, the only... Adam Savage. Um, I went last year in December to film a one day build with Adam Savage, which, yeah, you got me. It's a once in a lifetime, hopefully not once in a lifetime, but it was uh, an incredible experience. If you told pre college Kyle going into engineering that you will go and build something with Adam Savage, wouldn't have believed you at all. Um, so I got to do that. So on the tested YouTube channel, you will see Adam and I build something uh, that is a tribute to Mythbusters. It is a very beautiful piece with a lot of story behind it. Uh, and it was an amazing experience. Adam is one of the nicest people I've ever met. He's fantastic. So on the tested YouTube channel on Thursday, look out for a one-day build with yours truly, simultaneously you can uh go to our youtube channel and we we will have a 30 ish minute conversation with adam the man himself about life love philosophy mythbusters everything we kind of uh we explored a lot of topics and i was kind of gushing about how he changed my life whatever that will be on our channel so on thursday i have two videos for you to watch please tell me that you watch them when you do um it was an amazing experience, and I'm and I'm happy that I got to do something with Adam finally. Um, also, I should say that if you want to see, um, if you want to see the full conversation that I have with Adam, uh, which is over an hour long, unedited conversation with me and Adam talking, he brings up uh, poetry, and I challenge him on how to make YouTube video, like, we, we go through a lot of stuff for a full hour. If you want to see the full hour, 
join the facility today because I will be posting it early for facility members tomorrow morning. Uh, Go for God says, have you played any Tarkov yet? I have no idea what you mean. The next scientist plays is going to be help. I've never played Escape from Tarkov before. And the stream will not end until I'm successful at least once in extracting with Ludi. With Booty and Ludi. It's going to be a hell of a thing. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's the most hardcore military first-person shooter there is out there. Um, we'll be doing that. So, love seeing you pop, pop into Lupo's chat. Says Gopher. Yeah, I've been I've been watching a lot of Tarkov streamers for research. So, at the facility this week, go to tested. Check out Adam's video with me. Ho oh, ho. Check out our video with Adam here at the facility. Stay tuned for me. Possibly streaming soon what is arguably the most difficult and punishing game out there today that is popular. Um, we'll see how frustrated I get. There's a, uh, we have, we're prepared. We have a death counter and everything. So I hope to see you there. Um, and then soon, we have the Matrix in philosophy. We have the biology of cat tongues. We have so much coming up for you here at the facility. I hope you enjoy um, everything that we've been doing so far. 2021 was a good year for us, mostly because of the nuclear stuff that we were doing, I think. Um, but 2022, I hope, is just as crazy. Are you on Twitch, says Jordan? Um, I think we'll be doing it on YouTube um, just so everyone can go back and watch the full live streams if they want to. Um, first thing I hear is that you have a death count already. I do. Yeah. Uh, Kryn, congratulations. Look, tons of simpers today. Um, big thanks to Z and Mandatory Sin. Liz, coming in late today, but I still always appreciate you, Liz. Um, sorry for being super late. My tiny human Alex says, My mom lost her voice when she was sick, but why? With the 20... I would say um, when you're sick with a respiratory disease, so when you're sick with uh, an illness that affects where you breathe, Alex. Alex is a, a young... I don't think Alex is even 10 yet, right? I'm talking to Alex. Um, Alex, when... Uh, and I hope you're doing good in school. Your mom tells me that uh, it's been a little challenging, but I know you can do it, buddy. So, Alex, when you have... When you get sick in your parts of your body that you breathe with, one of the things that can happen to those parts that you breathe with is they, they kind of puff up. It's called inflammation. And so if I had to guess, I don't know the actual answer to this, Alex. I, I'd ask you to look it up or have your mom look it up. I, bel I would have to guess that part some of your breathing parts get a little inflamed, get a little big and puffy, and that makes it harder to talk and breathe and all these things. And um, you're going to sound different when your nose is blocked and when you, you're coughing a lot and all that kind of thing. Um, so that's what he's eight. Well, um, that one commenter who knows too much. Great being here and learning about the latest fusion breakthroughs. Got to go. Thank you, Kyle. I got to go now. Thank you, everyone who's here today. Thank you to all of you with Sim for Science. I hope you learned a little bit about fusion nuclear power where we're at today uh, i hope you stick with us when we are streaming later in the week and go and check out on thursday morning our video with the one and only adam savage over on the tested channel follow me uh everywhere i will post about it if you want to join the facility you can talk with me on discord even just a few minutes from now you get discounts on merch all this beautiful stuff thank you for being here uh I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, no matter where I see you, no matter when I see you. Um, and until that time, be nice to each other. It's year three into a very difficult process, so let's, let's try to be nice to each other and as understanding as possible, because at the end of the day, this is all we got.
Take care now. That was my Bob Ross goodbye.